Um, yeah, Jason Lee is um, was my mentor. I think I kind of surpassed him in, well, I surpassed him in rating. I don't know about ability, um, but he's still at Scrabble Club. He was basically the person that I wanted to play the most because our games were closest. Um, but this game was a very interesting game. I remember where I was sitting. I remember where he was sitting. I don't remember when this was, but it couldn't have been too long ago. And my opening rack, um, my opening rack was this. So this is my opening rack. Um, there are no playable words here in North American lexicon. So you have to exchange basically. And I decided there were many options to choose from. All of these options I considered, but once you get to keeping the X, the, the engine's actually totally wrong about that. Um, keeping the X in the beginning of a Scrabble game is not good. Um, you would much rather um, keep a leave that is prone to getting a bingo down because the X really, at the beginning of the game, doesn't score that well. Um, and when it does score, it gives a lot back to the opponent and it just puts you further behind in the basically in it, it, I would I would consider it to be development it's the development that we talk about in Scrabble um, in chess development is developing your pieces uh, getting everything out and, and castling the safety in Scrabble development is the beginning of the game really working towards um, working towards building your lead or getting into a position where you're most likely to win the game uh, from the get-go and not uh, not falling behind too much. So that's the development in Scrabble and the X really, really stunts that development. Um, so normally in these positions you might want to keep three vowels. If you keep the NST, I can show you in this little window here, um, it will say keeping the NS, keeping NST, that's NXTZ, my bingo chances are the highest um, out of all the other options. So you might think, well, why don't you keep NST? Well, if I'm bingoing like 46% of the time, what happens the other 54% of the time? Um, and obviously these are just average numbers. They're not like 100% accurate, but they're pretty accurate at the beginning of the game. Um, what happens the other the other 50 or so percent of the time? Well, if you're not bingoing, you might not be scoring very well because you've left yourself with prime bingo tiles, but those tiles aren't very good for scoring. Um, so it's always very, very close between keeping NST and maybe just the S and one of those two, two constants. So ST and ST, these positions actually arrive, uh, arise uh, relatively often where it's an opening turn exchange and you have three good bingo tiles and you either keep all three, which is probably the optimal choice by a little bit, or you decide to stay a bit flexible and you keep uh, two consonants instead of three. However, keeping the Z, as you can see, you bingo 9% of the time. So why the hell would you do that? Well, the uh, the times where you don't bingo, you're actually scoring a lot more. Um, and you're leaving yourself with more options over the course of a few moves. Um, so keeping the Z is, is actually close. It's always close to keeping um, not the Z. So I decided to keep this. Uh, actually, no, I, I kept this, which is actually the worst option. But I was... When you're in these positions and you're like a top expert, you basically just, it's basically just like in chess when you have like 
three moves that look really really similar and you just choose one of them basically uh, and it, that changes however you feel basically but yeah it's obviously best I would say to to keep the NST but I didn't so that was first turn um, he gave me his racks here actually um, and he exchanged AIO uh, keeping arts it's probably better to if you're gonna exchange to keep the yeah the stair leave um, but I guess for Jason he didn't really like that um, it's not like the best five five tile leave there is uh, but yeah it's all it's it's pretty clear that that's the best leave to keep maximizes his chances of a bingo um, but yeah so he exchanged AIO and my rack um, my rack was this and instead of just playing like Zin or Zit, which you normally do here, I decided I'd exchange again. And this time I kept INST. <laughs> um, this is kind of really stupid. I was just, I was kind of playing around this game. Um, so I decided to keep the Z and then it didn't work out and I decided not to keep the Z the next turn. Yeah, milts would have been nice. Um, and as you can see, it's not really doing that well, but it's not terrible. And considering that Jason is kind of close himself to getting that bingo down, the value of not playing something increases. So it's not that bad. I would say it's probably a little bit worse than playing Tiz. Um, but I did this. And then I was expecting him to bingo. Um, is this his rack? Yeah. So here, this is his rack, and he exchanged OI, which is another bizarre decision. Um, in these positions, making play it's like basically a, a game of cat and mouse where it's like you don't really want to make the first play because you're both just like okay i want to get that bingo down and if i don't bingo i don't want to play and so it becomes this like this face off of like hey, okay um i exchange you exchange I, and when does it end well it ends on the sixth turn because after five turns of zero score of a score of zero points the game ends and that's the rule it's kind of like threefold repetition in chess. If you get six consecutive scores of zero, the game ends and your rack is subtracted from your score. Um, so after five exchanges, so I exchange, he exchanges, I exchange, he exchanges, then I exchange, he has a choice. If he exchanges, the game ends, or if he passes, the game ends. So it basically puts the ball in his court. Um, so I should have the advantage of the, of the cat and mouse game as a result of that. Here, so he exchanges OI, which again isn't as strong as another exchange that he could have made. And then this is my rack. So <laughs> in this position, I took a, a few seconds to think and I was like, okay, like, yeah, I'm pretty sure that I should just play the bingo. So I put down the word pesting. And Jason holds. And what that means is he's considering challenging my worth. Um, which means, oh, well, maybe... If he challenges my word, then, and I'm wrong, then it's still five 
scores of zero points. So I started freaking out, like, wait a second, is pesting a word? Am I just making pesting up? Like, if I'm making pesting up, um, his incentive to challenge is so high because all he has to do, if he wins the challenge and the play comes off the board, all he has to do is make sure that after his play, his tiles are worth less than mine in total and the game will end. So I play pesting. He takes a minute or two or three. He's like, I don't think it's a word, Josh. I don't think it's a word. And it isn't a word. And he challenges it. And I'm like, oh, shit. I'm just I'm like I'm about to lose the game. And like while Jason was thinking, he was like, this is really funny. Like if this isn't a word, I'll win the game immediately on the spot. And he has the word. He has clarets. And he could just play clarets. He could just bingo and be up. But he's like, no, like, I'm just going to win the game. And he passes. And that's game over. Uh, Quackle doesn't think it's game over, but it is. The game is over. He loses nine points, and I lose 10 points. So he wins minus nine to minus 10. And that is the end of this game. Game is over. I don't know if you can see. According to the rules, the game is over. So let's see if uh, how many passes it'll take um, for Quackle. I don't know if Quackle. Oops. I don't know if Quackle understands the six pass rule. Let's see, that's five passes after the the phony. Yeah, Quackle doesn't understand. That's too bad. I wish it would end the game there. Um, anyways, okay, let's do this. The game ends minus nine to minus 10 in Jason's favor. I did O-U-R because Canadian. So yeah, six pass rule and game, game ends. So I did basically the worst possible thing I could do in this position, which is play a phony word. So all I was saying about how um, if you're going first, you have the advantage. That's only if you don't show your opponent exactly what tiles you have. So yeah, I resign. Well, I didn't resign, but we game ended. So I hope that was an interesting game for Mr. Kitty. <laughs> um, that was probably the shortest game I've ever played. And the funny part is that I think I seem to remember Jason, like he doesn't like Scrabble as much as I do. Um, and he also like has, has far to go. Like when he goes to Scrabble club, he, he likes to leave relatively early usually. Um, because he lives pretty far away from from the location so he'll often like i'll often have to like beg him for games like oh i don't know i think i'm gonna leave i don't really want to play like and i always like come on jason come on i just want to play let's play a game so i always have to like beg him uh to play and i think in this situation it was like a game where i was like he's like i don't know i think i want to leave and he's like okay fine i'll play one game and then this happened and i was like wait can we play another game? He's like, nope. <laughs> I'm going home. <laughs> Shit. Like, I didn't even get to play the game. <laughs> uh, anyways.